Canadian households face mounting debt risks as debt-to-income ratio soars. In an article published by Better Dwelling on July 4, 2023, the author highlights the concerning state of Canadian households' debt levels, emphasizing the substantial increase in the debt-to-income ratio. The article underscores the role of low interest rates maintained by the Canadian Central Bank in facilitating the accumulation of debt by households. Based on data from Statistics Canada, StatCan, the debt-to-income ratio reached a new record high in the first quarter of 2023, at 198.5%, signifying a significant financial risk for Canadian households. Few countries have their citizens with higher debt-to-income ratios. Not a distinction that should make Canadians proud. The household debt-to-income ratio is a measure that compares the debt held by households to their income. A rising ratio indicates that debt is accumulating at a faster pace than income, while a falling ratio suggests that income is rising or households are effectively managing their debts. Ideally, a stable or decreasing ratio is desirable, as a rising ratio often signifies an economic boom, but can impede future growth as individuals repay their debts. The article highlights the adverse consequences of an elevated debt-to-income ratio, where short-term consumption is artificially boosted, but at the expense of future income. A higher ratio not only exacerbates the drag on growth, but also increases the likelihood of a financial crisis. The article reveals that Canadian households are borrowing money at an unprecedented rate, leading to a surge in the debt-to-income ratio. In the first quarter of 2023, the ratio soared by 6.2 points, reaching an alarming level of 198.5%. This increase represents a substantial elevation of debt, nearly double the share of income. Notably, this ratio is the highest ever recorded in Canada's history, prompting stats can to explicitly label it as a financial risk. The data provided by Statistics Canada depicts the evolution of the debt-to-income ratio over the years, reflecting a steady upward trend. The article points out that Canadian households, despite experiencing low income growth, have not curbed their consumption. Instead, they are compensating for the income shortfall by taking on more debt. This observation suggests the presence of a moral hazard, as households are increasingly reliant on credit to maintain their spending habits. Surprisingly, the article highlights that even with higher interest rates, credit growth continues to outpace income growth. This phenomenon challenges conventional economic models, as it is unexpected for households to significantly increase borrowing when interest rates rise sharply. This behavior is partly fueled by the widespread belief that the central bank lacks the discipline to keep rates higher. Additionally, the lax regulation in Canada's financial system prioritizes avoiding defaults over protecting consumers. The article emphasizes that the surge in credit relative to income has contributed to an economy that is exceeding expectations. This suggests that the current economic performance may not be sustainable in the long term, given the high debt burden. The disproportionate increase in borrowing compared to income growth raises concerns about the stability of the Canadian economy and the financial well-being of households. The article emphasizes that a logical economic model would not predict such a sharp rise in household borrowing during a period of rising interest rates. Canadian households find themselves in a precarious situation as their debt levels continue to surge at an alarming rate. The record high debt-to-income ratio indicates a significant financial risk for households and the overall stability of the Canadian economy. The article highlights the role of low interest rates and lacks regulation in fueling this debt accumulation. It raises concerns about the sustainability of the current economic growth and emphasizes the need for measures to address the rising debt levels and their potential consequences. What are the risks of such high debt-to-income ratios for Canadians? The high debt-to-income ratio for Canadians poses several risks to individuals and the Canadian economy. Financial vulnerability, high levels of debt relative to income leave individuals more vulnerable to financial shocks, such as job loss, economic downturns, or rising interest rates. If individuals are unable to meet their debt obligations, it can lead to financial distress, including defaults, bankruptcies, and foreclosure on homes. This can have severe consequences for individuals' financial well-being and overall stability. 
Reduced consumer spending. When a significant portion of income goes towards servicing debt, it leaves individuals with less disposable income for other expenses, such as discretionary spending or saving for the future. This can lead to a decrease in consumer spending, which is a major driver of economic growth. Reduced consumer spending can have a negative impact on businesses, employment, and overall economic activity. Economic vulnerability. A high debt-to-income ratio at the household level can also make the broader economy more vulnerable to shocks. If a large number of households face financial difficulties simultaneously, it can create a ripple effect throughout the economy, leading to reduced consumer spending, lower business revenues, and potential contractions in economic growth. Potential for financial instability, a significant increase in debt levels, especially when accompanied by a fast credit growth rate, can raise concerns about financial stability. If debt becomes unsustainable for a large number of households, it could result in a wave of defaults that can destabilize the financial system. Financial institutions that are heavily exposed to high levels of household debt may face increased credit risk and potential losses. Constraints on monetary policy, high household debt levels can limit the effectiveness of monetary policy measures, such as interest rate adjustments. When debt levels are already high, increasing interest rates to curb borrowing and inflation may have a disproportionate impact on households, potentially leading to further financial stress and reduced economic activity. This can limit the central bank's ability to stimulate or manage the economy through traditional monetary policy tools. To mitigate these risks, policymakers may need to consider implementing measures to promote responsible borrowing, improve financial literacy, and strengthen prudential regulations. Additionally, households should exercise caution in managing their debt levels, including budgeting, reducing discretionary spending, and seeking financial advice when necessary. What is the outlook for Canadians' debt in the future? The potential outlook for future debt-to-income ratios for Canadians is subject to several key elements that can shape the trajectory of these ratios. Economic conditions, interest rates, government policies, housing market dynamics, consumer behavior, and regulatory changes collectively shape the future debt-to-income ratios for Canadians. Factors like a strong economy, higher interest rates, responsible borrowing, and stricter regulations can help stabilize or reduce the ratio. However, lower interest rates, looser regulations, rapid housing market growth, consumer reliance on credit, and inadequate financial literacy may contribute to a persistently high ratio. The effectiveness of government policies and regulatory changes will be key in managing debt levels and mitigating associated risks. What do you think? Should Canadians worry about their debt-to-income ratios and work to get their individual debt in order? Or is the debt-to-income ratio only a function of high housing prices and a way to more quickly build equity as home prices increase? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video and information useful, please smash the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so we can keep providing you with timely information you can apply on a daily basis.